Well folks, it's only taken a couple of aborted trips, but we're finally out in the water. Woo! So this is a part of the river, the Ovens River that I've wanted to do for a very long time, ever since I uh, finished a trip back in early 2017, when I finished just back up here at Peach Bar where we put in. This is the very lowest stretch of the Ovens River, and I use the uh, operative term low because the river is actually quite low at the moment. But it'll be good to do this lower stretch. It's uh, in cod season now, so we'll definitely be chasing some Murray cod. But uh, I hazard a guess that because the river's so low, we're going to be negotiating some logs and I could just see one up ahead already. Now, usually that wouldn't be so much of a problem in a kayak, but today, as I mentioned in a previous video, I've decided to bring a different sort of human-powered watercraft this time. I bought with me a massive fiberglass canoe. Purely for the comfort factor, you can bring a little bit of extra gear with you, but there could be a downside to that. Um, especially with the river the way it is, it might be very hard to negotiate some of these logs, and I've already seen a bit of a log jam that's going to cause me grief already. Oh dear. It's going to take some expert work. Oh yeah! Oh well, that was the first uh, obstacle negotiated without too much trouble. The only problem is if we have a um, a tree that's across in deep water, it might be a bit of an issue as trying to get out and pull the kayak and the canoe over it. But oh, well. the waters are um, quite quite warm at the moment. It's very nice. Oh, we got a headwind now. Now the weather across the next couple of days is supposed to be really nice. This wind will die off at some stage. We're looking about 30 to 32 degrees on both days. And uh, the nights are bet down to about 10 degrees. That's in Celsius, of course. So should be a really comfortable night. Won't be too hot, won't be too cold. Just really nice conditions for it. As I mentioned, I'm in the canoe today. It's a, I guess essentially a three-person canoe. It's got a seat at the back, seat at the front, and all that big space in the middle. Um, I did some uh, extensive testing out in the King River a couple of weeks ago to, to find out what the best paddling position was. I even put a chair in that uh, middle section to sit in there to paddle, but the steering control was really poor, sort of close to the center. So I tried sitting in the back, and you can turn it on a dime, with the double paddle in the back here. I've also got my little single blade um, canoe paddle as well. So, you know, if I want to go Canadian style, I can. But um, it sort of, when it was empty, it porpoised along a little bit. But now that I've got all the gear in, it just glides through perfectly. So really happy with the seating position. Very comfortable, lots of room. And I'm, I'll be glamping a little bit because I've, I've bought an Esky or a cooler. Some people call it, I've got a, a different sleeping arrangement that I'll uh, allude to a bit later on, but um, just to make things a bit more comfortable. But um, I'll tell you what, absolutely beautiful, magic to be out in the river. Um, so looking forward to this. And it's great to have good company with uh, Millsy and Pepper along for the ride today. Pepper's probably better company. <laughs> Pepper's probably better company. Um, I think it's become a, an all things outdoor staple to have uh, Millsy and Pepper along for the ride, so what, what better way to enjoy the outdoors than with your good mates?
Millsy's got her first fish. Woohoo! Alright, alright, let's keep him up. Oh. Yeah, no, nah, he's he's probably 40. Take the net maybe. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Just let let some line out and... Isn't it amazing how yeah, down in the dark water how light they get? Whereas up in the darker water they're uh, sort of the lighter water they're dark. they're really dark. Um, He's put on a good fight, JT. Huh? Sorry, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do this. We didn't work this out very well, did we? Sorry. Look at that. How, how's that? Like half an hour in? Half an hour in. You beauty. Uh, yeah. He's a proper cod and he's. Yeah, he's not a trout cod. We're only a light one, but um, good start. About 40 centimetres. Yep. Yeah, bloody oath. Good right. start. See if you can just uh, drop him off. Oh, he's well hooked, isn't he? He gives you a rod. Yeah, just look there. See if you can dump him. That's it. Oh, yes. On the boards. new uh, Axis waist belt uh, PFD on today and I've got to say that uh, it is super super comfortable because I don't have a whole heap of life jacket up around my chest here to keep me cool so um, really happy with that purchase um, I mean it's not as good when you're sitting down you've got a, a bit of a bulk around your waist here but Definitely a lot cooler. I'm really happy with it, so I'll definitely be using it in the uh, the tinny as well. Oh, money shot! I would have thrown in a belt for satisfaction. This is real. Oh, something's having a go. Oh, yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a nice one. Good work. You're beauty. Is he a keeper? Uh, not quite. Yes. I felt one hit and I just paused it and then um, hit the retrieve again and he went bang. Look, JT, you should pull him out and show us. I will. So JT's just got a beautiful little cod. It's only about 10, 10.30 in the morning on our first day. And he has snagged a lovely little one. Oh yeah, he's a nicey. Good size. Maybe, maybe 45. Yeah, good size. Look at him. Beautiful. Show us him, mate. What do you reckon, folks? How good's that? Look at that little JT fish, eh? Look at that sucker. That's a beauty, mate. That's a lovely fish. Good day, uh, good good fish to start the season on. Beauty, yeah. mate. All right, let's get him back in the water. So excited, mate. She struggles to contain her. Good work, mate. Yes. This is very interesting, mate. New beauty off off the mark on the boards. We've only done probably about a k. That was about the fifteenth pass of the day. 
and Millsy reckons he's done about 20 casts and we're already both on the board so very similar fish around the 40 to 45 centimeter mark so not not legal but you know nice to catch the fish oh yeah I'm coming over get him get him about the same Good work. Grab him, mate. Nick him off. Check the supplies if you need them. Oh, he's well hooked too. You'll need those. What do you reckon? About 38? 38. Yeah, 38 to 40. Yeah. Uh, mid to late 30s. Good work, you persisted with that snag, didn't you? Yeah, she paid eventually. off, you got him eventually, yeah. Jeez, he's... Three or four hits, like good yeah. hits in there. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty happy with him. Yeah, I know, I, I would be too. Good release. Go. That's really nice. Nice and clean. Beautiful work. Fishing has dropped off a bit, so we decided we're just going to make some miles now. Um, have a bit of lunch and then sort of paddle through the early afternoon, get some more miles in. Um, should hopefully help help us to knock off the Ks a bit. And yeah, start fishing again in the late afternoon and find a place to camp. Yeah, been a this point. There you go. Ready? All good. <laughs> we should launch us off the back of the car. <laughs> so I haven't really talked about my um, mode of transport yet, but um, I've uh, borrowed this old fiberglass canoe. This canoe is probably older than I am. I reckon it's about 40, 45 years old. And I used to paddle in this canoe when I was a, a little kid down on the, the, um, the river at Rowley there. And uh, so I thought, oh, it might be a good time to try some a different uh, mode of transport. So far, it's been pretty good. It's it's quite heavy. It's a hell of a lot heavier than um, the, the kayaks that I usually use. But all in all, I haven't had a great deal of trouble with it, and it's allowed me to bring a lot of extra stuff with me that uh, makes camping a bit more comfortable. So it's your standard uh, Canadian-style canoe. Got a nice moulded seat in the front, then your big uh, sort of luggage bay there in the middle, and another moulded seat up the back. 
So I said before that I uh, tested it out in the King River and I tested a few uh, different uh, ways of, of paddling it. So my little um, deck chair in the, the centre bay there and paddled it like that. But I found that the steering wasn't very responsive. So I tried it from the back and a hell of a lot more uh, ability to steer it. And um, the only problem was that it sort of porpoised a little bit, but uh, with all the weight in the front, it's uh, really smooth to paddle now. So really happy with the setup that I got. So what are your thoughts so far, mate? Two nice fish in the bag already. Good fishing. Yeah, good fishing. Done all right so far with the fishing. Cup of tea. Um, loving the water, but a bit low. I'd hate to be here any any later. I reckon yeah. if we were a month or even two or three weeks later, yeah. I reckon we'd be doing a lot of walking and, uh, and dragging. Yeah. So, but were yeah, the water's looking good and clear too. Were you as surprised as I was to get um, fish like so so quick into it, into the trip? Oh, you never really know, do you? No, JT, you don't. Like God. Well, Sometimes you rock up and you do well. Today we started very well. I hope, I hope tonight continues the same, but yeah. but yeah, it's we go all day and get Yeah, up. we were too late for top water fishing, so you know we, it was nice to, to get a couple of fish around the nine ten o'clock mark. Yep. But uh, yeah, she sort of went quite late late morning there, and so um, we're just trying to make some miles now um, while the fishing's a bit uh, a bit slow, and then pick her up again late in the afternoon. Yeah, Have a good up. good arvo sesh, and then find a camp and get onto the um, onto the bait from the bank. Yeah, a few yeah. beers. A few beers. Oh, that's another uh, beauty of bringing the canoe. I've got an esky, and I've got beer in the esky. All right, let's make some miles. Let's do it. Let's pump out the miles. Got a nice tailwind. Righty. Have a nice lunch. Ready to push out some miles this afternoon before we start fishing again sort of around four or five o'clock ish so hopefully we don't have any more issues or too many more issues with having to get out around big logs again I'm sure we won't be able to make it all the way through without that so that's all right we'll just push between them When the cruise ship's got a bit of momentum. I think that's what I'm calling it, the cruise ship. So we left uh, lunch probably about, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes ago. And we we're making some really good time, so with any luck we'll be at the, the Burman Road Bridge in short order. And then punch out a few more Ks before we start to slow down for the afternoon fishing. You're a big fella, aren't ya? Tipping point. We'll pull her over. Check it out. I've developed this fantastic method for riding up over logs. 
Ready? Gets you over the tipping point, and then you just go hit, 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 hit. Hello, Mr. Wobbly. Hey, this boat's called a wallaby. How ironic. He's beautiful. I know. They're not afraid, are they? I thought Peppy would be doing a nut. I told him that. <laughs> so if you have a look in the water, you'll see little tracks. Oh, yeah, here it is. Now, if you walk up to one, you'll see what looks like a rock at the end of it. Pick it up and have a gander. What, just here? Yeah. Oh, they're, um, they're mussels. Freshwater mussels. Yes, yeah, so I've found these before in the river. Here, here. Out. Heaps we'll of just, them. Yeah. Time. I'll tell you what. Are they, are they edible? Bloody yeah? You can take some? Well, we are you allowed to take some? I've never... Look, look how many, there's hundreds. Oh, no. Look at all their tracks. Yeah. And, and down here, they're everywhere. Look at the big tracks there. There's, there's a muscle there. They're everywhere. Look at them all in there. Yeah. Looks like a snake's been through, doesn't it? Yeah. Apparently they use their big um, tongue muscle to move them. Who pops out of the clam and moves them through the water. Yeah, and they pump all that juice yeah, yeah. and eat all the algae and stuff. They love it in the shallow water. Obviously that's algae. why they're here, because of all the algae in the water. I'll tell you what, JT, we can have a food. We can have some of them on a the feed tonight. Really? Do you eat seafood? <laughs> oh, I'm not a huge mussel fan, to be honest with you. Pick, what's that, is that another one just here? Yeah, one there. Pick him up? No, no, it's a stick. Just stick. Oh, the size that one's been bashed. Yeah, that was one I just picked up before. Oh, yeah, there's another couple out there that Pepper's Ow. just walking on. This one. Grab the other one. There he is. Look at the size of him. Good size, freshwater mussels. That'd be beautiful. Mm -hmm. slow, just slow, um, just lightly simmered until the shell opens and then just pick them out and eat them. Oh. Yeah, I've never seen any, um, what the regulations are for mussels down here, but a good size. You know, it'd be worth looking up, if you can get internet service. Look at them all in. Yeah, they're everywhere. It's just going on 5 o'clock, so we reckon we're going to, the next little stretch, try and find a place to camp. Starting to see some good little flat spots, but we've been a little bit picky because we've got time. Um, we we'll look for a nice little, uh, little gradual beach and a nice little flat spot. We can uh, build a campfire and um, have a little flat spot to set up our camp. So then we'll get the uh, the rods and the bait in the water and see if we can catch a fish off the bank. What do you reckon, mate? I reckon so. Right. Let's give it a crack. Before. Let's give it a crack.
Just found ourselves a nice little sandy bar to camp on. I reckon uh, Millsy's absolutely uh, grateful to have a camp spot now because I think his bum's severely numb. My ass is sore. <laughs> his ass is sore. So um, yeah, we're going to set up on this nice little sandbar for tonight. Uh, throw some bait in the water and uh, drink a few tins, I think. Woohoo! Here's my bed for tonight. In my makeshift uh, dry bag. Swag. Done. One, two, three. Mm. Oh. Can't talk. That is so cold. Can't talk eating. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a good fire going. Wind's starting to drop out too, so um, it's looking like it's going to be a nice evening. Bugs are starting to attack, so we're gonna retreat to bed. And it's 9:30, and we've had a long day. So.
wasn't the greatest night to sleep ever. Um, always seems to be the first night I have out bush. Get him to sleep really well. But, um, took me ages to go to sleep and then woke up early, but I think that was because of the, the cockatoos. Make a hell of a racket in the morning. So, Mills has just used the ablutions. How was it, mate? Very, very tidy. <laughs> very, very tidy. Is that um, G rated, mate? No, oh, sorry, mate. I didn't make anything. <laughs> That's going on the video. Um, well, kisses, mate. <laughs> yeah, time for a cup of coffee, eh? Tour of EJT, I mean. Which is quite simple. Rightio, we are away on day two. Got away at about 7.30ish. Um, so we can uh, do a bit of top water fishing hopefully and uh, get some buffs off the top water, that'd be nice. Um, nice and overcast and cool this morning, so really great conditions for paddling. Um, supposed to get to about 32 degrees Celsius today, so it'll be fairly warm in the afternoon. Um, our original plan was to paddle the, the following 30 k's down to down to the Bunalong boat ramp where I, my vehicle's actually uh, kept at the moment but um, we're not going to push ourselves if we need to uh, pull out sooner there's plenty of places to pull out so we'll just take it easy. A bit of a junction here um, and the river splits in two if we go that way it's about 800 meters and maybe some logs but if we go down this way we're adding 
probably an extra two to three kilometers. So we're going to have a go at the uh, the narrower section, which will cut off quite a bit of distance for us. And then um, if if we don't like it when we're going down a bit, we'll turn around and come back. Oh well, looks like we're gonna have to turn around and go the long way. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I think that'd be a hell of a lot of pain going through there. This turns into like a creek, JT. Yeah. <laughs> so we only had to go not even 100 metres up that, uh, that little branch just to see what was wrong with it. So we're back at to the junction now and we're taking the long way. I um I hazard a guess that uh, this sort of situation is going to happen to us a bit today, so we're going to have to keep our wits about us and keep checking the Google Maps to, uh, to see which is the right course to take. But that's all right. All part of the adventure. Not knowing what you're going into. There you go. Oh, it's a black hawk. That's a black hawk fire jumper. back in if we'd have done that. Doesn't look like much though. The water was higher, you probably would have been able to make that and you would have been able to straight paddle that for about 10 minutes. Whereas the route we've just taken to come around it uh, has taken us about an hour. Of the ovens and Murray rivers, so it's been a bit of a, a bit of a slog this morning. No fish to be had either. Talking to a lot of the, the motors that we've passed as well, and they've said um, they haven't had much luck this morning either. So it's probably good that we're just pushing on for a bit, um, make up some miles, and we can uh, probably take our time a little bit later on. We still haven't decided uh, where we're going to pull out yet, so we'll just keep going along and see how we feel. See how we feel at lunchtime, but uh, yeah, definitely having to work to push the, the boats along today. Crazy horse, you are. Right. Just had another break because we're both feeling a little bit stiff. But, um, I'm going to push for another bit now, have some lunch, and then hopefully, it's only one more sort of. 45 minutes to an hour push till the, the highway where we can get picked up. Just, uh, we're both struggling a bit with the lack of flow. And we're both getting a bit stiff and sore, but other than that, having a good time. I think it's fisheries. Yeah, it is, I think. Mm. Hello. They don't care about national parks. How you going? You should have a rod. <laughs> you should have a rod. You should. There's one there. <laughs> Please don't take that. So that boat you just saw coming towards us was the fisheries officers. Uh, they stopped to have a chat, really nice blokes. Obviously asked us for our fishing licences, but um, 
you know, asking us for intelligence, seeing if we saw any uh, set lines or springers or anything like that uh, further up the river. So, love the work that those blokes do, um, keeping the waterways full of fish for everyone. So, a bit of a trip update now. <clears throat> We're into the last 3k stretch. We've, we've made the call and we're going to pull out at the Murray Valley Highway. So, Millsy's son Geordie's coming down to pick me up to run me back to my car at Bundalong. I'll bring that back and we'll load the boats up and uh, head on home. So, it's probably a good thing that we've put in some, uh, some miles today to at least get to here and then we can get home in good time, get the boats unpacked and... Uh, settle in back home so rather than trying to get back in the dark tonight and we're both pretty tired too so I think it'll be a good idea oh, it's lucky I spotted you otherwise we would have kept going down to the bridge Jump, jump! Imagine if you tip down just then. Imagine if you tip down just then. Jesus, lucky us. 